<laughs> you know, two weeks ago, Senator John Kennedy, the Republican from Louisiana, observed that President Biden's newly proposed $6.9 trillion 2024 budget was so disastrous, it took his breath away. But many Americans might be happy that he got his breath back. Last week, the senator used his breath, his knowledge of reality, and his wit to put one of Biden's leftist favorites on the spot and to allow the world to see the emptiness of that favorite's thinking. Hi, everyone. I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. Kennedy's exchange with a Biden judicial nominee came March 22nd. It was a verbal smackdown of Cato Cruz, President Biden's nominee to become a judge for the U.S. District Court of Colorado. Tell me how you analyze a Brady motion. And he didn't mean a famous quarterback signaling a downfield receiver. Hey, Danny, off either two to three. Now, this should have been an easy layup or perhaps a home run or to keep the football theme running, it should have been an easy touchdown for a man who already is a U.S. magistrate judge in Colorado. But Cruz fumbled. And he not only fumbled, he did so in such glorious, stellar fashion that one wonders if he should actually be on the bench at all. How I analyze a Brady motion? Yes. Uh, Senator, in my uh, four and a half years on the bench, I don't believe I've had the occasion to uh, address a Brady uh, motion in my career. Do you know what a Brady motion is? Uh, Senator, uh, in my time on the bench, I've not had occasion to address that, and so uh, it's not coming to mind at the moment what a Brady motion is. <laughs> Okay. Well, you know, with the exception of people who perhaps have been in cryo suspension for the past 50 years, that answer should hit almost everybody as one of the worst possible answers ever offered by a judicial nominee. The Brady motion is so fundamental to jurisprudence and the sense of fair play in a government court, as, of course, as far as anyone can imagine, a system forcing people to pay for it isn't necessarily fair, so the government court isn't exactly fair either. But within that context, it is so fundamental to the sense of fair play within the government court system that most of us take it for granted. Without question, any judge ought to be familiar with it on a day-to-day -day basis, the way a fish is familiar with breathing water to survive. It's the principle that prosecutors have to disclose all evidence to defense attorneys pre-trial via the discovery process. And it was established in the landmark 1963 Supreme Court case Brady v. Maryland. Senator Kennedy appeared so alarmed by Cato not getting it that he probed some more. Do you recall the U.S. Supreme Court case, Brady v. Maryland? At this point, Cruz probably should have developed a sudden case of laryngitis or stomach virus and gotten out of there. Uh, I do recall uh, the name of the case, the senator, yes. And what did it hold? I believe that the uh, Brady case uh, in well, Senator, I believe the Brady case involves something regarding the Second Amendment. It is not. I've not had occasion to address that. If that issue were to come before me, uh, I would certainly analyze that Supreme Court precedent uh, and apply it uh, as I would need to to the facts in front of me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So not only is Cruz ignorant of the very motion that defense attorneys can make to secure all prosecutorial evidence via the discovery process, something that is about as fundamental to U.S. criminal procedure as the gavel is to the operations of the court staffers. This guy Cruz actually thinks it has something to do with the horrifically unconstitutional 1993 Brady Firearms Act, or it has something to do with the human propagandists and gun grabbers at the Brady Coalition itself. <laughs> That's almost as bad as it can possibly get. But if one looks even more closely at Cruz's answer, it gets even worse. 
As a man who swears an oath to protect and defend the U.S. Constitution and to abide by its strictures, Mr. Cruz errs saying that he will apply the Supreme Court precedent. This, this particular answer is one of those areas where judges and many media rubes show their complete and utter ignorance of the U.S. Constitution and the oath that political officials take. Government officers, military personnel, judges, and politicians, police, they don't swear oaths to abide by the Supreme Court precedent. They swear oaths to abide by the Constitution. And if a Supreme Court precedent runs contrary to the Constitution, they have a sworn obligation to oppose the precedent, period. In this case, the principle of discovery as reaffirmed in the Brady case in the 60s actually does conform with the U.S. Constitution. Specifically, it conforms with the Fifth and Sixth Amendments. But if a Supreme Court ruling such as that, say, in Roe v. Wade, for example, didn't comport with the rules of the Constitution, any lower court judge, like Mr. Cruz, who might be faced with that breach, is sworn to reject the errant ruling from the Supreme Court and abide by the founding document. Man, amazing, amazing exchange and very, very revealing. You know, while Brady held up in this, Cruz, on the other hand, simply couldn't have looked any worse. He figures that Joe Biden would pick him to become a judge higher up for a long time. Great. Couldn't get any better than this, Mom. This is swell. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you on Rumble where they don't censor us. And, of course, we'll see you on YouTube where, yes, they do. We'll look for your comments, and please feel free to comment about anything you desire about these stories, and feel free to share these with friends as well. And please visit mrctv.org. That's mrctv.org, where, when you visit, we hope that you will consider donating to the Media Research Center. You can also find us in Facebook, on Instagram, at Parlor and on Twitter. And on Twitter, I'm at Guard Goldsmith. And on Gab, I'm at Gardner Goldsmith. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.